Well, hey folks, welcome back to the channel. This is Fist25 coming at you with a video on the infamous Drake Cutlass Black by Drake Interplanetary. Let's go ahead and roll the intro because I want to get into this video right now. Alright everybody, welcome back to the channel. As you can see in front of me is the Drake Cutlass Black. The Drake AS1 Cutlass Black is a low-cost, easy-to-maintain solution for local in-system militia units. The larger-than-average cargo hold, the Rio or the Radar Intercept Officer Seat, and dedicated tractor mount are the company literature insists for every facilitating search and for, for facilitating search and rescue operations however the cutlass black is very popular amongst pirates this is the quintessential pirate ship and it's such a neat ship i mean it, the cutty red the cutty blue are pretty cool the cutty black the cutty black is where it's at this is in my opinion the premium, the quintessential starter ship. Um, we got some harsh sun out here on Hurston. And let's look at this baby from the front. The ship is uh, like any other uh, Cutlass design. Uh, and we're going to look into the brochure and see the older designs with the much more rounded fuselage. But uh, isn't it time that you had a ship that lets you be you? That's why Drake made the Cutlass Black. A ship with nothing but potential. A ship that can be anything to anyone. Each black is, is as individual as the person who owns it. No one will make no one will mistake your machine for anybody else's, and that's how it should be. So the Cutlass Black, unlike the blue, does have struts up on its canopy here, as we can see. Um it well, once we get in there, it's it's not going to be that bad. We actually have some pretty good glass up there. Um, as you can see, there's weapons on the top and the bottom. And I have a turret up there. The weapons I have equipped on the bottom are attrition threes. The weapons I have on top are, are my uh, Mantis GT-220s. We have the standard uh, Cutlass landing gear configuration with uh, kind of two... Two gear in the front, really one gear, and then two gear in the back. Uh, it has the standard kind of forward wing. I'm not, I'm just not sure the purpose of this thing. It says ac access module tractor. Now I know the Cutlass Black in the future is going to have a tractor beam. I think maybe that's the purpose of these things is to tractor module asset access. Yeah, it's got to be where the tractor beam is going to mount. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work, but I think that's probably where they're going to go. Otherwise, I don't know the purpose of, of having those struts there. Um, and this is just such a cool looking ship. Um, I remember the first time flying it and I was like, oh, it's quite a bit of firepower, firepower for this maneuverable of a ship. Um, that was, of course, before the Cutty Blue as well. Uh, one thing that's different between the Cutty Black uh, and the the other ships, one thing that's not different is the engines. The engines are awesome, and they look phenomenal, and I really dig them. Uh, but they're the same on all the Cutlass models. But one thing that's different about the, the Cutlass here is the side doors. And the Cutlass Black has these side doors, and the, the Cutty Red and the Cutty Blue have those docking ports. Well, the Cutty Black doesn't. It's got these little side doors, and it's it in a pinch. It's actually a really, really good dropship. It's maneuverable. It's fast. Uh, it's got a lot of cargo space in there. It is considered a medium freight, medium fighter. I think it's probably the quintessential multi-role ship. Uh, it's made for a crew of two, but you can easily solo it. A medium ship. It's got 46 standard cargo units on it which is quite a lot and it, it has a big enough cargo hold in there to fit 
uh, uh, cyclone and to also fit in there like probably I could probably fit a dragonfly in there as well um, let's go around back here gosh those ancients are cool looking that's got that weird kind of thing at the top of the tail it's I'm not sure what that's for maybe that's another part of the tractor beam system so you can actually put things inside I'm just not sure what the future plans are, but uh, it is a symmetrical ship. The left side looks the same as the starboard side, the port side, starboard side. Um, what else about it? You can pick up this ship for 1385300 Alpha UDC uh, at the New Deal Shipyard in Lorville in 313. Um, you can rent it for, well, that's actually a cheap price for this type of ship. Um, you can rent it for one day. Or 27,700 Alpha UBC or 10,000 rec. Takes about 13 minutes, 13 and a half minutes for a claim. Uh, expedite two minutes. Um, the expedite fee is about 3,300 Alpha UBC. This ship currently is always available to purchase, and on the website it is $115. It used to be $100, but now it's $115. Um, both of the weapon hardpoints are size threes. And uh, the turret is also size threes. Um, I didn't mention what I have up there. I got some tarantula uh, Mark threes up there, uh, ballistic cannons, which I really like, and I think they're nice for a turret gunner. Um, we'll get into the speeds here in a minute, but it's, it's quoted at being able to go 165 uh, SCM and 1114 uh, max speed. This ship was introduced about 106 years ago in 2845. About the same time as the other cutlasses. And uh, currently, you know, it's still in development. Uh, the tractor beam, the Cutty Black is intended to have a tractor beam. Um, but, you know, ship size tractor beams are not currently implemented yet. There's also some different paint jobs for this guy. Uh, now, I have all of them except one because I don't have the Best in Show uh, 2949 Cutlass Black, which is actually technically its own ship. It's not, it, it's like it's different from the Cuddy Black. It's actually its own ship, um, but it functions the same thing. Like it is a Cuddy Black, but it's different. And uh, the CIG changed how they did that going forward. But I do have, and we're going to see the the ghoulish green skin, the Best in Show 2950 skin, the Mistwalker skin, and my favorite is the Coal Fire skin, but I like that on the Cuddy Red. So without further ado, let's take a look inside the uh, the back area here. It's a little windy out here at uh, HDMS Edmund on Hurston. That's okay, because now we're inside the ship. So standard door for any type of, uh, of cutlass here. And uh, it's nice to have that, you know, be standard. Um, let's see uh, there is the door switch here open close you can also use the door itself and then there's all the other stuff back here like component housing that's actually not interactable as you can see I do have a Cyclone MT in here I wanted to show that not only can you fit a big vehicle in this ship but you still have room for more I mean there's room for cargo in here there's room for boxes in here um Let's go ahead and open up these side doors real quick. So you could have people just boom, just drop off. And and most of the time, if you're on a planet with like low gravity or a moon, you can actually jump up into the ship and pull yourself up here. I you, I don't think you can do it on a person. I think it's got too much gravity. But these doors are available. And, you know, if, if we weren't an armistice, I could pull out my gun and shoot. So it is kind of a, a drop ship as well. I mean, it's so much multi-role here in this ship. You can haul cargo, you can haul boxes, you can you can dogfight with it, you can do dropship missions with it. Um, just such a versatile type of ship. Um, but let's go ahead and head forward. Now, this is just like any other cutty here. You have, uh, actually in the other cutties, I believe this was like an armor rack and you could, there was like hooks for armor. I don't see that in here. Um, there is, uh, weapons racks over here. So there's four we weapons racks and there's two bunks. So you can log out in this ship. One for the pilot, one for the Rio. 
Uh, there's the turret, which we'll get into later, and the cockpit. So pretty darn simple. Pro pilots back here. Um, they really have no function as of yet, although with PAX 314 on the horizon, missile operator mode, they'll be able to use that. The Cutlass Black holds, uh, I believe, the highest they can do is size 3 missiles. Um, right now, I have a mix of size 3s and size 2s in there. But as you can see, it's it's you know very, very similar to all the other cutties. If you watch my other Cutty Red Cutty uh, Blue video, it's got six functioning MFDs, a 2D radar. Looking down, we have our power button. We have engine on, engine off. We got exit to the right. Um, there's not much more to it. Uh, open exterior, press to unlock. That is pretty much it. <laughs> Let's do a free look. There is plenty of glass up there for dogfighting. I don't mind these struts. They're like A pillars in a car. I don't mind them at all. I can see out the left. I can see out the right. Uh, you don't have any. Oh, you do have some downward view of the glass down here. So makes it fairly easy to land. Let's go ahead and start up the engines here. All right. Engines are started up. Let's take off from Edmund here. Maybe. Well, maybe the engines were on and I just turned them off. That would. Yep, that's uh, that's that's me. OK, so the engines are on now. Let's go ahead and slowly lift up. That's the thing with 313 is. Oh, look at the wind pushing us. Is the nose lifts up more than the back end, even though the thrust is in the back end, the main thrust. I'm not moving. Is my mouse moving? No, my mouse is dead centered. This is the wind. Moving us around. I, I, I've always thought there's way too much wind and weather um, on the planets right now. They definitely need to refine that. It's been this way for like a year. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's reset the view. Let's uh, go ahead and, I guess, at normal uh, SCM speed, we will lift up. We'll go ahead and cycle the landing gear. Obviously, this is a VTOL ship, so we will cycle our engines with the K key. Those look so good and they sound good. And we will go ahead and make our way up into space. Complete vertical, vertical head mount. You know what I mean? Let's get out of here. I'm going to even increase the throttle so we can get out of here a little bit faster. Right, guys, so Cuddy Black leaving Hurston's atmosphere here at a 90 degree angle. Here's a view of the ship from the bottom. Ooh, didn't that look nice? In those the mountains and the clouds and the sunset air type of oh geez. That looks just spectacular. Atlas Black. Maybe it's uh, while we're heading out of the atmosphere, it's time for a screenshot. What do you think, folks? Uh, can we make the thumbnail as part of the video? I think we can. Boom. That just happened. All right. <laughs> Let's go back to our regular view. Um, and we are out of the atmosphere. I'm going to just go ahead and jump to a uh, like a mark. Oh, there's see, you can see Hurston Dynamics building from here. I mean, you can see it from space too, but it's pretty cool that we can see it from here. I'm going to go ahead and jump to Everest Harbor. Now, we're not going to go to Everest Harbor, but I just want to get out of the atmosphere, get into space, and we'll we'll do a speed check here. So at SCM, we are at 164. Um, meters a second as we head towards Everest Harbor here. Let's see how fast we can get this ship. Climbing past 900, 1000, 1100, and we're slow. Okay, there we go. So we're at 1113 and we are really cruising right past Everest Harbor. Let's, uh, let's see the retro. Do we see the retro thrusters fire here? Not really, even though we're slowing down. Let me actually, it looks like you can see them in the front of the engines there. That's our retro thrusters. 
but man, looks it looks just really, really good. This is a really cool view as well. Um, wish I had some some light on the ship. There we go. All right, guys. So the the Cutlass Black. This is the standard uh, uh, skin here. It's kind of gray. It's black. It looks really, really good. And this is the view of the ship from space. So I think. Well, let me go ahead and fire the weapons. That is uh, secondary fire. That's my Gatlings up there. My primary is the Attritions. And I did promise you we will go look at the turrets. And then after we do a little turret gameplay here, we will uh, go ahead and... Ooh, what was that? Okay. <laughs> we will uh, go get into some trouble. Okay, the turret of the Cutlass Black. Um, like I said, I have some turn power on, buddy. There we go. So, as I'm moving the turret, I have Tarantula Mark III's on here. One of my favorite ballistic cannons. Super powerful for a size 3. There you go. That's the turret. Uh, looks like... Uh, Basically four MFDs and a 2D radar. We'll go ahead and secure ourselves from the turret. Make our way back into the ship. Look at how nice the floor looks. Like clean and polished. Just that metal, that brushed metal look. It looks awesome. Anyway, that is the Cutlass Black. The interior and exterior tour. Now we're going to go into a, get a little combat mission going. And uh, we'll see how, how she does in combat. All right, folks, we're we're here at a very high risk target mission um, in the Cutlass Black, and let's go see what we can do against this guy here, Toshiaki Velasco. First thing I'm gonna do is get a couple missiles at him. He's in an Anvil Valkyrie. Get at him! Get at him! There we go. Oh, he's not happy. He's not happy at all. I'm between two asteroids, so I don't want to... Yeah, see... Oh, and he ran into the asteroid. These NPCs have a bad habit of doing that. But I got his friends here. Uh, we got a Drake Cutlass Black gets Cutlass Black. It's like cannibalism. What's up, Cutty Black? Don't run into that asteroid. Oh. Oh, they came at me pretty good. But, you know, the rampart holds its own. Oh, he just... No, I actually killed him. I thought he ran into the asteroid. Nope. But this guy is in a buck. So, with the buck, I am going to try... He's faster than me. To do a couple missiles. Nope. We're going to have to do a joust. Yeah, maybe you realize what I was doing there, buddy. Ooh, he's a little too fast for me to be doing that. Yep. The Cuddy, it's a little sluggish in its controls. Um, obviously, because it's not a light fighter, but um, I just can't really turn around fast enough to maintain my speed. There we go. Get some missiles on you. Oh, I didn't even want the size threes. Whoops. I'll shoot the size twos at you. Oh, got him anyway. And those missiles just are firing at nothing. Anyway, guys, first person combat from the pilot seat in the Cutlass Black. Next up, we're going to check out the loadout. We're going to look at uh, the brochure, uh, some of the older stuff for the Cutty Black. We're going to look at the commercial for the Cutlass Black. And uh, then we'll get into that third person chase camera dogfighting as well as take a uh, we'll take a look at the paints and the loadout. So stay tuned. And if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. Uh, there's a little red button on YouTube right below the video. And I would really appreciate it if you're liking the content so far. We'll see you in a second.
All right, folks. Hey, welcome back to the loadout section of the video. And uh, we are here looking at the Drake Interplanetary Cutlass Black loadout uh, brought to you by the DBS Calculator Live at Urkel.games. Um, let's look at the basic stats for the Cutlass Black. First off, it is a medium fighter, medium freight. Uh, career is multi-role. The ship size is three. It has 21,120 hull hit points. So like more than a Hornet, more than technically like an Asperia Talon, but it doesn't handle like a fighter. It, it's not that it handles bad. It's just, you know, it's a bigger, bulkier ship. It's 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 a really good ship for the price and uh, even Alpha UBC price. And it's just really great multi-role. Uh, let's see. It weighs 246,000 kilograms. Uh, SCM speed 165 meters a second. Maximum speed 1,114 meters a second. Its pitch is 50 degrees, yaw 45, roll 90. So none of those are really great. It does handle a little bit sluggishly, but it's not bad. Once you get those firing arc, those those four guns on target, uh, it's pretty pretty deadly. And it, there's quite a bit of missiles on this loadout as well. Uh, standard uh, size two hydrogen and, and uh, quantum fuel capacity, and the cargo grid, as we mentioned before, has 46 SCUs of cargo. You pick the ship up at Lorville at the New Deal Shipyard for one million three hundred eighty-five thousand off of UBC. So let's look at the base stats here. The base DPS with the base weapons, which are not bad. They're, you can leave this loadout on if you like getting the weapons. One thousand two hundred twenty-three DPS, one hundred sixty alpha damage. Okay, so that's that's okay. Um, what I like to do to get away from that twelve twenty-three is I'm going to take everything to fixed weapons, right? Um, I typically don't use gimbals anymore because I have a dual stick setup, so I, I'm pretty accurate on the joysticks. Um, so I'm going to choose two laser repeaters. I, I, I tend to prefer the attrition threes uh, because I do get pretty close to my targets when I fight, especially when I'm dogfighting with this. It's still small and fast enough to get in close. Um, for the ballistics, I use the Mantis GT220s. Uh, love that gun. And so there you go. The we went from 1200 to 21 almost 2200 dps once those attritions are heated up with 313 alpha damage on the turret uh these are size three guns there's two of them uh the panther is a fine gun to leave on there it's got really good range um there's really no hard downside to the panther but uh, i like to put on ballistic cannons on there and uh, I know it's less DPS, but if I'm having a turret gunner in there, I want their bullets to break through and really do some damage. So uh, I haven't put on, tra I put on Tarantula GT870 Mark III's, and those are just beastly, beastly ballistic cannons, and they do a ton of damage. Um, so we're, we're under what the 337s would do, but I believe the extra ballistics goes a long way. Okay, for missiles, I actually leave this loadout as is. This is a great mixed loadout of size threes and size two missiles. I don't think I don't think you can really beat the stock loadout of missiles. Uh, if you wanted to switch over to uh, EM missiles or IRs, feel free. But I'm not going to recommend changing this at all. Now, I am going to recommend changing the shields. Everything in here is civilian grade C from the quantum drive coolers, power plants, and shields. So with the shields, um, notice we have 14,584 hit points. And the full charge is 82 seconds. That's actually pretty good. But I like to go and switch over to the rampart. It gives us 32,000 hit point total, but it does take forever to charge up. It's like three minutes. But a lot more shields. So... I would consider that their industrial grade A. You could also use the FR-76, which is a, a charges much faster, even though it's still fairly slow. Um, but it overall has, you know, 8,000 less hit points. If you can afford to steal a shield off of a Prowler and have a Sucuron, that's probably the best shield you can get. But uh, let's go to power plants. Uh, so for power plants, I like my standard tried and true JS 400 military grade a power plant. It fulfills all our power needs. For coolers, 
you can see we're already not using very much in cooling. You know, we still have 8,000 capacity, um, but I don't like using the civilian grades. I do like using the industrial snow packs. Uh, notice it doubles the cooling versus the cold snap, the, the snow pack versus the cold snap. Um, and that just, it lets us use our afterburners longer and, and anything that deals with cooling. So now we have a cooling capacity of 17,000 and we're only using 470. So that's, that's really good as well. For the quantum drive, I would recommend any of the military drives or the fastest drive. Now, when we get to pyro, things will be different. You'll need a more efficient drive and all that stuff. But for flying around Stanton, I would definitely go with an XL1 if you could, or a Jaeger or a Crossfield. They're all great drives, but I roll with an XL1 in this, being able to go from PO to Microtech in just you know under four and a half minutes. So this is my standard loadout here. Now we're going to go over some of the paints for the Cutlass Black. Um, so the Cutlass Black has uh, five different paints. It has its stock skin, which you've seen throughout the video. Then it also has the 2950 Best in Show livery. Now this livery is a lot of uh, whites and, and, and it has golds in there as well. Um, it, it looks really, really good. Um, I got this for owning the ship real money in during the 2950 Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. So that is the best in show livery. Next up is some, uh, some other paint jobs, the Cutlass Coal Fire livery. As you can see, the, the Coal Fire livery is primarily gray and it has red highlights. Uh, this livery right now is on the Cutlass Red, which is what I prefer it on because it, there's, the reds are real subtle and it, and it takes the Cutlass Red from this high red ambulance over to a little bit more uh, dulled out with some grays in there. I think it looks really good. And it's one of my favorite paint jobs. I, I usually just leave it on the Cutlass Red because all of these paints can switch over, uh, except for the Best in Show. It, it, all of them can switch over to the other Cutlasses. The next livery up is the Ghoulish Green livery, which uh, basically it, it, it's, it's very green. <laughs> it's metallic green and black. Uh, it's a very striking look that highlights... Uh, uh, the holiday for I think it's a uh, day of Vara, and so that is that is the ghoulish green livery. The next livery coming up is the Mistwalker livery, which is like gray camo and it's, it's kind of a special type of paint job. And it, it it's I don't know it has this uh, like digital type of white paint job. Uh, they call it gray digital camo. So that is the uh, all the different paint jobs for the Cutlass Black. The next paint, uh, the next thing we're gonna do is put all of our stuff into the cart and check out the prices. Uh, you can see the full loadout for upgrading the Cutlass Black is four hundred seventy-five thousand fifty dollars, or I guess Alpha UEC, uh, and you can get all that from the various shops here. I encourage you to use uh, the website and. Uh, be able to do your own loadouts and pick and choose your own stuff. So right now, thanks for watching and uh, we'll get back to you with the next part of the video. All right, everybody, it's time to do a quick review of the uh, Drake Cutlass Black a brochure that is part of the uh, RSI website. Now, just to pre-warn you, this is the older model of the Drake Cutlass Black where it had a VTOL on the sides and uh, it was just, uh, it looked a lot different and it's, it's not a completely different ship, but it's a different ship today. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. Play by different rules, the Cutlass 2945. United by independence. So we can see the Cutty Black down here uh, towards the bottom of the screen with the Cutty Red on the top and the blue on the right without compromise, and this is the Cutlass Black. That's the Cutlass Red and the Cutlass Blue. And the Cutlass Blue again. All right, the Cutlass Black. Uh, now take these with a grain of salt, right? Because the weapons and shields and all that stuff are completely out of date. But uh, base stats, it's a militia type ship. Manufacturer's Drake. 
a crew of three, really. It's a crew of two now. Um, the mass is totally different. Cargo capacity is different. I guess originally it was supposed to have 150 cargo, which if you look at the graphic up top, that's a huge cargo area, much bigger than it used to be. I'm sorry, much bigger than it is now. And But I think the ship overall was bigger before. So interesting. Um, the additional equipment, the NAV E7 secure docking collar. Um, well, no, the Cuddy Black uh, can't dock anymore. But it does, it, one day it will have the Sure Grip tractor turret. <laughs> Uh, I guess it says it's mounted inside facing the cargo door, which makes a lot of sense. Um, it's probably on the doors that slide open because there's no VTOL thruster there anymore. So it would make sense to have it there or it would make sense to have them on the front. Um, maybe there'll be multiple tractor beams on the ship. I'm just not sure. A ship is never just a ship. A ship is your job. It's your home. It's your best friend. It's your sword and shield. It's part of who you are. Isn't it time that you had a ship that lets you be you? That's why Drake made the Cutlass Black, a ship with nothing but potential. A ship that can be anything to anyone. Each black is a, as individual as the person who owns it. No one will mistake your machine for anybody else's. That's how it should be. So, uh, of course, these are kind of archaic graphics. Uh, probably 20... Let's see, it's 2951. That was uh, so these are six plus years ago graphics. Uh, the game was a lot different back then. Uh, apparently, the ship was a lot different back then as well. So, interesting to take a look back in time here. Um, here's some more pictures of the way the Cutlass Black used to be. It was a lot bigger in the torso area where those VTOL thrusters are, um, those are now gone. It's a lot more square now than it was round. So, yeah, and I think overall it might just be smaller, um, at least in the, uh, the cargo area. And then it gets into the Cutlass Blues, the Cutlass Red. And then it comes up on the base stats. If you want to see the Cutlass Blue and the Cutlass Red stuff, uh, go ahead and watch that video. Um, it is part of the Drake playlist. I have here on YouTube. And then, uh, yeah, Drake's uh, little motto and logo. And, and that's about it for the brochure, everybody. Short and sweet to the point. And let's uh, move on to the next part.
Well, hey everybody, it is Fist, and and our time has come too soon. It is time to actually end the video for the Drake Cutlass Black as uh, we pass through uh, the, the the spinny things on the rings, I guess, of Port Olisar. Um, it reminds me of how much I'm going to miss this place once they finally tear Port Olisar down. And hopefully it'll be rebuilt or something like that, but that is a topic for another video. Um, I do want to say thank you so much for watching the video. I'm flabbergasted that we actually have almost 500 people that have subscribed to us, and I appreciate every single one of you uh, watching the video and your patronage. Um, I do want to remind you, if you haven't already liked and subscribed and we have earned your like and your subscribe, please uh, do so on YouTube. It it's really helps us out. Uh, of course, our goal is to get to 1000 and we are actually really close to 500. Um, we want this channel to grow organically. And if you guys have any comments, questions, suggestions, please put them in the comments section below. Um, Jawa and I tend to answer every single comment or question that's put out there. Um, what do you guys think of the Cutty Black? Do you enjoy this ship? Is it one of your favorite ships? Do you agree it's probably the most premium starter ship out there because you can always buy it and it's right around $100? Let me know what you think about the Cutty Black and uh, as I make my way around Port Olisar here, uh, enjoying uh, some of the gameplay here, uh, again, thank you, and I guess we'll see you on the next video. I believe that one's going to be on the Drake Herald, and then we'll move into the Caterpillar, the Dragonfly, stuff like that. And uh, for Fist 5 myself, and for Java Sparky, good night, Stanton.